Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome. Glad you're here today. This is Strength for Today's Man, Volume 84. And I want to say this. There is no shame in my game. I can say that without any reservation. I can say because of the way I'm living my life now, there is no shame in my game. I couldn't say that years ago because there was all kind of shame in my game and a lot of embarrassment. Today, I want to read from Romans 8, 1 and 2, where it says, There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. There is no shame in my game. Why is that? Because my game is on point now. Everything I do is in pleasing God. Everything I say, I want to please God. Everything that I try to accomplish, I want to bring glory to God. Didn't always used to be that way because I had plenty of shame. Just like many of you that are watching and listening, think about your life right now. Think about what you're dealing with right now. How much shame are you dealing with because of past actions? There's a lot I know that we can jot down and say, man, I shouldn't have did this. I shouldn't have did that. Wow, that was embarrassing. Oh my God, that was shameful. There's a lot of things in our actions that are shameful. So there might not be any shame in your game, but there's a whole lot of shame in the way that you conduct yourself. There's a whole lot of shame in the way that you carry yourself, especially when you get to a certain age and you try to revert back to your 20s and your 30s. You need to pump the brakes on that, especially if you are 40 and above, 50 and above. When do you stop acting like your past self? When does that stop? When do you get to a place in your life to say, wow, that's embarrassing. Wow, that was shameful. And when we realize that is when we go back and look at some of the pictures that we've taken over our lifetime. Go back through some of your pictures when you were young and how you carried yourself when you were young. I'm sure you sitting there going, man, that was shameful. That was embarrassing. Oh my God, I can't believe I wore that. I can't believe I hung out with that person. I can't believe I was talking like that. There's a lot of later years shame. And as men, I understand that when we think about our actions, it can bring a couple of things. It can bring great pride. It can bring great shame or perhaps something in between that. I don't know what's in between pride and shame, but I'm sure there's a happy medium somewhere in there between pride and shame. But I know that we think about these things after the fact, and we need to think about this beforehand. We need to think with the end in mind. And I know in the moment, when we are in the moment, we don't think about the end in mind. We think about right now. We're going to party today. We're going to have fun today. We're going to hang out today. We're going to go to the clubs. How old do you have to be to realize you're too old to be in a club? And I know that I'm talking to many of those that aren't strong enough in their walk to where they don't go to clubs anymore. Because I know there's, there's plenty of Christians that still go to the clubs because they don't feel any shame in that. They don't feel any embarrassment in that. They go to the clubs, they hang out, they party, and then they want to go to church and praise God. That's a double standard. There's a whole lot of shame in your game. If I'm talking to you and you're doing that, there's a whole lot of shame in your game. Now, don't get offended. I'm here because I love you and I want the best for you. And I'm just a person to tell you exactly what you need to hear. Strength for today's man and woman. You need to hear it. 
Many times you're not going to hear it from your friends because they're there with you. They want to party with you. They need a ride. They want to go to the clubs with you. They need you to buy them a drink. There's no shame in your game. However, there's a lot of shame in your actions. Today, in our devotion, sometimes men, women, when we fail at something or we make mistakes, you know what we do? We think we're failures. We think we are failures because we made a mistake. We didn't follow through. We didn't finish. We didn't accomplish our goals. Stop thinking that you're a failure. How many times in business have you heard fail your way to the top? You have to fail your way out of whatever you're dealing with. Fail your way out. Because if that's the only avenue that you have to get out of that mess, then you just keep right on failing until you're out of all that mess. You got to be tired and sick and tired until you are sick and tired of being sick and tired. Because for most of us, that's, that's where we have to be in order for us to really stop and think, I don't need to do this anymore. I don't need to act like this anymore. I don't need to conduct myself this way. I don't need to talk like this. I don't even need to dress like this any longer. I am not 20 years old. You don't need to walk around with all your cookies showing. Where's the respect in that? I know you might have a, as they say, a banging body. I know you might be a 10. However, where is the shame in the game when it comes to showing all your cookies? Give men something to imagine instead of just laying all your cookies out there going, here it is. And we as men be like, okay, we see it now. We see it later. We don't want to see it anymore because all, we already know what it looked like. I'm done. You know, eh, ah, I'm real done. But when do you get to a place in your life to say, hey, I know that there's no shame in my game, but I don't want there to be any shame in my actions. I don't want there to be any shame in how I conduct myself. I don't want any later shame that's going to come back to haunt me because a lot of that stuff that we've done when we were younger, oh, it's going to come back and it's going to haunt you. You know what Paul is saying here? First and foremost, the Apostle Paul is telling us and he's encouraging us and he's trying to make it clear to us that as we find worth and identity in Christ, we are encouraged to not put any additional shame and unnecessary shame on ourselves for the brokenness we experience in the world. We are going to experience a lot of brokenness. And just because you experience some brokenness does not mean that you have to go out there and act like you're broken. You might have been hurt. And I know hurt people hurt people. So what you want to do, you want to go out and your actions are saying you're trying to hurt the person that has hurt you. And in most cases, that person that has hurt you has already moved on. They're not even thinking about you. They're just thinking about the next person they're going to hurt. So you're going to have to put that brokenness behind you. You're going to have to get yourself together and realize that your brokenness does not define you. You are not that brokenness. You are not that weakness. You are not that disappointment. You are so much better than that. So you don't have to go out there and sleep with every Tom, Dick, and Harry. You don't have to go out there and sleep with every Susan, Sally, and Sarah trying to make a point. There might not be any shame in your game, but there's a whole lot of shame in your actions. And Paul is trying to get us to understand here. We don't have to put any additional and unnecessary shame on ourselves because of what's going on around us, because of what happens to us. We don't have to do that. We can stand up. And like the word says, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You don't have to worry about any shame because you're in Christ Jesus. You don't have to worry about all that past mess 
coming up saying, hey, how you doing? Remember me? No, I don't. Because I left you in the sea of forgetfulness when I asked God to forgive me for all that craziness, all that brokenness, all that pain, all that suffering. I said, God, I'm sorry for anything that I've done that might have brought this on myself. I asked you to forgive me. And the moment you ask God to forgive you, whoom, he just wipes the slate clean. Paul is encouraging us here. Once we find our identity in Christ, that's when we recognize that we do need grace upon grace upon grace. You can't do it yourself. You can't do it by yourself. Only through Christ do you have the ability to come through all the brokenness that you're experiencing right now, even in your past brokenness. God is the only one that can ease that pain. Johnny Walker cannot ease your pain. Hennessy cannot ease your pain. It'll dull it, but it's not going to ease your pain because once you come out of that high, it's going to greet you the next day. How you doing? Remember me? I'm disappointment. Remember me? I'm brokenness. You thought you was going to drown me last night in Hennessy? Nah, nah, baby. Here I am today. And then we got to deal with the hangover. You might not have any shame in your game, but there's a whole lot of shame in the way you carry yourself. There's a whole lot of shame in your actions. Let me finish here. We need to embrace a lot of this thinking about how we don't need any additional and unnecessary shame in our life because of the world. We should expect to make mistakes because we're human. We're prone to make mistakes because we are human. We're not perfect and we are going to make mistakes, a lot of mistakes, but we have one that is there in our corner that will help us through these mistakes. And who is that? You're absolutely correct, Christ Jesus. We are going to experience a lot of brokenness in our life, just like we're going to experience a lot of failures and a lot of mistakes. We're going to experience all of this just because we're going to experience that brokenness, just because we're going to experience that hurt and pain. That does not mean that we are failures as men or as women. And it doesn't mean that we're failures as a follower of Christ. You have to do your best to provide a grace field environment is the environment that you're in right now is that grace field what is it filled with let's ponder for a moment what is your environment filled with right now lies disappointment hurts cheat scandals brokenness failures mistakes is that what your environment is consisting of right now well, I have a remedy for that. Grace-filled environments. When we make mistakes, we do not have to embrace the shame. We don't have to embrace the shame. The world wants you to embrace the shame. The world wants to put a light on your shame. We don't have to worry about any of that. But instead, we just need to receive the grace that Jesus provides. And when he provides that grace... We can talk about the mistakes. We can talk about what we've come through. We can talk about how we made it out. We can talk about how we've made it over. That's where the testimony comes in. You know the saying, there's no testimony without the test and every test, there's a testimony. Well, your testimony don't come before your test. Your testimony comes after your test. Then you can talk about it. You don't have to dwell on it. But now as a victorious testimony, you can say, hey, God brought me through the brokenness. God brought me through all my mistakes. God brought me through all that heartache. God brought me out of all that mess. He's healed my heart from him. He's healed my heart from her. He's healed my heart from them. God has done it. Then we come to the understanding, what did I learn from that? What did you learn from all of that pain? What did you learn from the brokenness? What did you learn from those mistakes you made? And don't repeat it. 
There is no shame in my game because my game is on point. Is your game on point? Then I'll high five you. Boom, right there. Your game is on point. So remember this. There is now no condemnation. There's no shame for those who are in Christ Jesus. Why? Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. Let me close with this. God, grant me grace for every situation I encounter today. There is no shame in your game. Guys, this is Strength for Today's Man, Volume 84. I look forward to being with you again tomorrow. And please remember now, subscribe, like, and share it with someone else. Don't keep it to yourself. Share the wealth. I'll see you soon.